Greetings programs and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 after a little bit of a delay with me getting distracted by the new Aliens game which is quite a lot of fun. So what I have noticed, I, I was poking around a little bit just to see things I could do. I mean my plan is still to take over the rest of Scandinavia but if I click onto the religion screen, well at the moment Ukonuusku, or however one pronounces that, I think it's just Ukonusko. Is it's currently an unreformed faith. If we click on holy sites, we can see that two of the holy sites are currently held by rulers of that faith. One by me, and one by uh, a fellow Ukomensko ruler, Ukon Ukonusko rather. All we need is one more and we can actually reform the faith. And it so happens there's one right on my border there with Novgorod. So we're going to see if we can actually take that off them. Can I just conquer county? Yes, there we go. So I can easily take them because obviously this is the massively overpowered starting queen that we're going with. Our player air is still pretty decent. I mean their martial score 17, that's really quite nice and they've inherited Herculean and quick but uh, yeah, they, they haven't gotten any of the other really nice uh, stats sadly. Uh, their wife uh, she, I think I married, her, married them for the stats but she's yeah, she's rakish which means um well, yeah, <laughs> the uh, the description says it all really, and she's also managed to get herself a venereal disease, so that's that's wonderful. That's something you want to see. Anyway, we have declared war, so we actually need to raise our armies. Am I set more than? Uh, no, I have not. So you know, I'll just set a thing right there on the border. And can we even get away with just our men at arms regiments are kind of more or less maxed out? That's like 2000 plus right there. We could probably get away with that and then not ha having to be spending quite as much money. I'm also check uh, a few champions and create the Duchy of Puyanma, which is that area there. Could potentially give that to an underling. Is there anyone there that we particularly uh, like? Uh, I hold that chiefdom. Uh, I think I hold most of that swathe of land there actually. Uh, I still have a, quite a few holdings that I can like take but of course that's all going to get divided up between my uh, many children at the point where this character dies. That That's the point where this playthrough is going to get a little bit stickier is once this character dies you know we, we have to try and do as much with this character as we can basically and uh, uh, the, the, the more we can do the, the better position we'll potentially be in but it's also going to be a tricky position in that we might end up with like civil wars and people fighting over the inheritance so I can yeah on OP we'll just take the best of both there and let's see that is about three and a half thousand. I only got one and a half thousand there because it's only my levies but I am so grossly OP that we might well just be able to yeah, easily beat them. So what was I going for next? This is probably the more useful tree uh, although that one's quite useful for level plus one. Uh, Oh, what does Overseer do again? Marshal plus two, stewardship plus two. I think Gallant's more about personally leading armies. Yeah, let's go with that then. So I'll go down that side, which is more about kind of marriage and whatnot, which is not that useful to me, but the end point of that is probably more useful. There's so many martial traits that they basically blot out her character portrait. So, yeah, she's a little bit OP, just a tiny little bit. 
Right, uh, we've actually occupied that province, so we might as well just occupy wherever's closest. How are we doing with, like, fame? We're still fairly insignificant, and I don't think we're going to be... Oh, we're not that far off our first legacy. We'll definitely have our first legacy in her lifetime, maybe even the first two, and I'll have to decide what I want to go for. Because, of course, the legacies affects everyone in the, dis in the dynasty. It's not just about your present ruler. And some of the buffs are quite nice. I mean, some of them are not particularly huge, but uh, when they stack up over time, yeah, you can get some some nice bonuses out of it down the line. Uh, oh, it's got some, some prisoners that could be ransoms. So that's quite nice. Um, a couple of kids that we need to foist off on. I wish it would do this automatically. That was one of the things that they actually added in the, the later patches of CK2. And I can't remember which one it was, but yeah. Um, Who's this that I can grant her? Oh dear, she doesn't look good. Uh, typhoid. Uh, let's try drastic measures. Oh no, okay, well, I'm getting stress, whatever happens there. Quite a lot of it, potentially. So I could potentially give that vassal to High Chief of Savo, I guess. That's fine. Oh, I can also just Vassalize, who are you? I wish it would take you there sort of automatically. Uh, yep, you are... Oh, you're up there. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, if we can just vassalize somebody without... Um, like, it's, it's the quicker way to do it. What am I doing? Oh, for vassalage, there we go. I will remember where all the correct things are eventually. Uh, there we go. So that's that pair of twins. Uh, we make her like a shield maiden or something. Wait, eunuch? At what point did that happen? I okay. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, was that during some illness treatment or something? I I don't know. I haven't encountered that before. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I had a quick pause to look that up and I, I have no idea how it occurred and there's no way of, you know, un eunuching somebody. Unsurprisingly, although you actually could in Crusader Kings 2 <laughs> if you joined the Satanists, it was a way to un eunuch yourself because CK2 had quite a lot of silly supernatural things going on. And, oh dear, she died of, of typhus at the age of 13, looking really not very healthy at all. Right, having lost my daughter, um, that's actually pushed me up a stress threshold. That's not good. I can take the drugs. I can... Uh, I've got the confider trait, so that's fine. I can decrease myself below that, uh, but we, will, we also need to uh, have a a hunt or a feast or something to get rid of more stress, because that's that's not great. That's quite high. We also have some internal squabbling going on there. Also, where are we with technologies? That's another thing I should check. Now I am the head of the Finnish culture, so I get to check the fascination. You don't get to have, with these earlier start dates, you don't get to have any kind of primogeniture uh, until the next era, early medieval. So if you start on the 1066 start date, you have a chance of starting already with that available, or with it available to actually um, uh, research, but it does say not available to the Finns, which is interesting. Although that might just be because it's in the era ahead and it's just not available to anybody right now. 
But I don't think that then, I think we're still a ways off um, being able to give everything to a single heir. Like 95%. One more seed should do it. I should know there's some troops there, that'll be quicker. In theory it'll be quicker anyway. And then we actually have more than enough piety to make ourselves into a reformed faith. Uh, but I could also maybe monkey around with some of the things, see if there's some uh, more interesting choices that fit what I want to do. 98%! Oh, that's so close. So we are going to have to do one more siege after all. There's the holding. Oh, there's the holding. That shouldn't take too long. And we have some more prisoners we can ransom as well. We're actually racking up a, a nice amount of gold. Uh, somebody that can marry. Uh, uh, shall we go with... Sure. Oh wait, no, don't want matrilineal. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay. And enforce demands, and we will get that one province, or which I, I don't think we need to explicitly convert it. Uh, I can't remember, but we could actually just check. I think it's just the holder has to be of the correct faith. I don't think the county itself has to be of the correct faith. We might as well do it anyway. Right, so reform. So let's have a look see at what we can do. So we currently have communal identity, conversion speed of uh, counties in my culture. That one might actually be quite useful, but it means we have to uh, culture convert basically. But yeah, I think that is uh, quite a useful one. We'll hang on to that one. Ancestor worship which means the level of splendor has a bigger effect, which is basically your dynasty splendor has a bigger effect on um, uh, new members of the dynasty. Maximum long reign bonus plus 50%, quite useful. Characters of this faith gain additional bonus upon pilgrimage. And Sanctity of Nature, uh, I think we might drop that one. It's got some useful Marshall stuff there, but all buildings costing 10% more isn't great. So what else can we stick in there? I'll, I'll probably jump ahead because I'm just going to be reading descriptions and deciding what I'm going to put in. So Herpaderp, I've realised something quite important. It's not that you have to have three holy sites in the hands of the same faith. It's that I personally have to have three holy sites before I can reform the faith. So yeah, I, I've gone with pursuit of power by the way, and one nice change they have made is that if I click away from this screen and then go back, it actually remembers, which is quite nice. It, you don't have to reselect everything um, if you realize that you cannot reform a faith at that time. So yeah, there's probably some things in here I need to go over as well. Although most of that's probably fine. But yeah, I actually need to have yet another holy site under my thumb so I can potentially attack uh, a fellow uh, oh, I can't even remember how you pronounce it now what did I say Ukonusko something like that I probably attack them they are the closest and probably easiest to get to there's one down there as well where's the fifth one that one there perm oh my gosh that's all the way over there wow that's way over there good grief okay yeah i guess this will be the easiest one then uh, I'm, i might even just oh that's a kingdom now we can't subjugate them but i can just take say uh king uh chief Thomas of uzel so that's going to cost me 25 piety. But yeah, it could be costing me 100 and it's only going to cost me 25. So let's do that. 
So once again, let's just raise all the men at arms. And this isn't precisely who I was intending to go after, but it is. Uh, oh, I thought we would just go over in boats, but apparently it's decided it's going to path me that way. Maybe it's set up that way deliberately so that you always take the cheapest option. I don't know. It kind of makes sense, I suppose. But I do have cash. And also, talking of cash, I can probably splash some of that cash. Oh, we're currently upgrading ground halls. Okay. Uh, tribal holdings are relatively cheap, so yeah, let's sprinkle some, like, just palisades around or something. Increase the defensibility of these places a little bit, and they also give me extra levies, extra garrisons, so they're nice and cheap. And... Uh, I can actually be upgraded to level 2. I think they upgrade to something uh, if they're fully upgraded once you uh, change to being feudal, which we probably will at some point. Now, even vastly outnumbered. <laughs> oh, 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 they've brought extra. Oh, we might actually lose this. Okay, hang on. Let's raise the rest of my armies there, then. Which is quite a bit. It also means they're going to suffer from attrition. Well, let's just continue down that tree. Right, well, you know, you could have done this the easy way, and now, now we're going to uh, come and stomp on your face. With great vigour. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one that I that was already upgrading there? It's fine. Oh, I wish you could uh, click on your own holdings when you're a little bit further out. Okay. Doesn't really that matter that much. So well, I've lost a little bit of war score, but that doesn't really, it's not a huge deal. I really do hope they, they add that at some point, it, it would be nice. To just be able to, like, designate a, a court tutor. It, it does baffle me slightly that they've gone back to essentially an older version of, of a system that they had upgraded. And made less annoying, because it... it I mean, I, I guess you have to do it for fewer people. I think one of the issues in Crusader Kings 2 was that it, it had you doing it for basically most of the kids that came up in your court, which got really, really tedious. So maybe they decided to revert it to the older way of doing it, but also make, make it only your close family. Um, oh, okay, I have to reveal the secret because otherwise it would push me over into a critical level of stress. Uh, which I was going to do something about. Oh, also we've got a whole bunch of people we can release. Potentially. Well, I could release you and demand can... Oh no, <laughs> dead set against that. Also another baby on the way, that's fine. Having lots of personally held provinces is probably a good thing in that regard. We're not going to uh, have too much issues with people squabbling over titles, I hope. Oh. Yeah, the AI was wigging out there slightly. Do I attack? Do I not attack? Let's just get stuck in a loop. Another ransom, only ten gold coins, but that's fine. Also, low control, we probably can set our 
uh, from a culture. I don't really need to do that anywhere. That's largely okay. There's definitely a side of this game that I neglect, and I probably did neglect a lot in CK2 as well, but it's probably more of a thing in this game of, um, like, secrets and hooks and things, because you can use that to make quite a lot of money, potentially, but I don't really have to do that. <laughs> right, so let's just upgrade that while we're here, and that does mean that we can probably do the thing, but let's also host a feast and lose that stress. Right, so we should now be able to, there we go, reform faith. So let's just double check what I want to do. I did change to Pursuit of Power, which gives me uh, a nice Cassius Belli bonus, and I get an Invasion Cassius Belli once per lifetime, so I can basically keep nobbling my neighbours, which is going to be a useful thing. Um, we could also switch to equality, and I still have some piety. Uh, we could maybe go for a head of faith, which can be useful. 5600. Uh, Revoke land titles from infidels, or oh, that would give me increased county f uh, conversion speed, would also make other faith vassals more likely to join factions. Increase danger from heresies when at low fervor. Let's just leave it on righteous. Uh, theocratic. Yeah, in, with lay clergy that means we can directly hold temples, but I don't... Is that going to be useful? Maybe? That costs 600. Because once she goes, the ability to, to directly control more things within a, a smaller realm might be quite useful. So let's go with that. Uh, don't think we need to change any of that. Uh, apparently adultery is already just kind of accepted, witchcraft accepted, deviancy shunned, same-sex relations, we could actually make that accepted, just, I'm going to be a filthy liberal. <laughs> I mean, this is Finland, it's it's one of those, those, uh, you know, those anything goes Scandinavian countries, right? <laughs> Clerical gender, either, marriage allowed, uh, this is something we could potentially change, recruitment. Uh, they can serve as commanders or champions, which is quite useful. Control growth plus 20%. We'll just leave that as is. I think... I think that's fine. Um, I, I could possibly change ancestor worship out for something else, but I don't know if I have the budget to do so. There's not many of the, the big tenets that are, are cheap enough. Like this one, for instance, having a feast to earn piety. It gives a slight bump to vassal opinion, but I don't know. Sky burials, that's quite a nice one in that it gives uh, a small disease resistance boost to everybody. I don't know, would that be better? Because I quite like that maximum long reign bonus. And the bonus faith for going on pilgrimages. Let's just keep that as is. Okay, there's probably people shouting at me in the comments of, oh, you should have picked this or whatever, but it's fine. Right, so we've now done that. We are now a reformed faith, and I think there's a fair few of my counties have converted, but not all of them. And it's obviously, obviously uh, uh, quite a lot of the... Uh, the Kind of, oh, the old version of the faith still going. So anyway, there's a good, there we go, there's the Reformation. And we have a, a High Shaman now as well. So there's the Feast going underway. Uh, does that show... Now this should be the... this should give me a thing where if they like me enough I get, like, all the taxation? Or is that... oh, that's all we want. Uh, 
Or is that from the court chaplain? I can't remember. Right. Um, yep. That's quite nice. Nice little bonus from that. I think all my vassals will have converted, maybe. Is there a way to... Uh, where's the realm tree hiding? I remember there's a realm tree somewhere and I've forgotten where it is, or am I thinking of CK2? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, oh dear. Right, so there we go. Stress down to zero. Um, just trying to see if there's anything I should be doing or thinking of. Well, here we go. Well, I can see them all here, but I can't see what their faith is from this screen, which is a bit annoying. So that's a daughter. Uh, I don't think we can change any of these. I don't think we have the, the wherewithal. Right, um, we're already enhancing control and promote culture. I don't need to do that anywhere. They're all Sammy. Is that the same? Balto Phoenix. So that's the same culture group, at least. Uh, there's one who wants to pay a ransom. That's that's a good point, actually. We should see if there's. Uh, no, I could just release them all. Just do a mass release, which gives people, obviously, you know, a nice bump of opinion. I could also take consorts if I wanted, like, even more kids. Although, potentially, I made a... Oh, no, I've got a heterosexual character, so I couldn't take female consorts, which, you know, you could... you can If you have female consorts, or, you know, if, if you're a... Uh, if I was a male character and could take male consorts, you don't have to have to worry about having more kids than you necessarily want at that point, but it's also it still gives you the potential to reduce stress, shall we say. <laughs> right, so uh, we're looking good, I think. So let's start, uh, let's keep going with our uh, conquest. And uh, just keep ploughing on through Sweden and Norway. Keep grabbing the bits that we don't have already. We also have apparently a peasant rabble faction, but oh wow, well, they're not anything to worry about at the moment. Uh, maybe also invite some champions. So we have all of our uh, champion slots filled. Champions slash knights. <laughs> I do like that. I feel like if you have really good stats, and if you have really poor stats, it'll go, this is you, unfortunately. But if you've got good stats, it'll say, and you are magnificent. Which, you know, obviously I am. We're about to get another... There we go. Lifestyle. So spouse opinion plus fifty skills from scout uh, from spouse counselor tasks is actually quite useful. We could potentially even uh, what are you on at the moment? They're just general assist ruler, but we could bump. We could get extra stewardship to build up more cash, for example. Uh, higher learning. Managed domain. Let's just go with managed domain so we'll get slightly more money built up. Force demands, gain contested title, gain a bit of fame, disband the army, and on to our next victor, I mean person who we are going to uh, liberate. We can click conquer duchy there actually which costs me more prestige but also, also lets me just take everything all at once. I 
think in CK2, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you had your levies, um, not levies, you had your retinues just sit around on the map permanently. So it was, it was a bit overpowered at the point where you had lots and lots of them, because it just meant you had a permanently available standing army, and uh, it meant that you didn't have to like raise up your troops any time you wanted to go to war. <laughs> so it's probably a bit more balanced than having done it this way. Like he could probably be ransomed for a, oh, only, only 10 gold, I guess. So when it says few champions, how few? Okay, 16 out of 19. That's a nice thing, this, um, the, uh, where are we, lifestyle focus. This tree overall makes them, I think, generally more effective. That one in particular, chivalric dominance. It's quite handy. Let's see if there's any extra... Mm. It would be nice if you could set some of these out into being separate drop-downs instead of it all being in the same um, tab or whatever you want to call it. Force demands, and we'll take all the titles. 16 out of 23, so that's still fine. Still got three years left on that conversion. And... Uh, Hi Chief of Corelli wants to ride my horse, and not, not in that way, you perverts. Um, <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. It's a female character. What the hell am I talking about? I don't know. Um, right. Although it would kind of fit, because apparently he's a seducer. But um, Oh, no, wait. It was the Duke of Corellia. Not that guy. Okay. But the reason I was looking at this guy is actually we could create the Duchy of Poyanma and... Uh, like give it to him, maybe? And I like get some nice prestige out of that. So what I can do is grant title and... Uh, I can give him that and I can maybe also give him that. And then say keep that. And he'll still want that, but he'll like me enough that it's not really going to be a problem. Yeah, it's only minus 25 for that, that desires chieftain malice. Oh, apparently we also need um, a steward, because I'm guessing it's someone that was... Uh, yeah, anyway. You steward. Uh, that's fine. Right, so who next? Let's create another rally point up there. And he's not really very close, so we could waste time trying to, uh, to get that, but uh, yeah. And he wants to pay 10 pounds for someone in my prison, that's absolutely fine. Oh, we can also get another kingdom title. But we won't do that because, of course, all titles get split. So you want the top title, at least at this stage of the game, to be the only title. Because otherwise then you get two kingdoms where once there were one. So although it would give me a really nice prestige bump, we really don't want to do that. How are we doing health-wise, by the way? It's probably still very, very good. Yes. She's going to live for a good old long time, hopefully. This is one of the things I'm curious to see, is exactly how long she is going to last for. Oh, we have our first dynasty legacy, so... Uh, what do we want to go for? I was thinking of the military ones, which will help overall. I mean... Blood is also very, very useful. 
because it increases the chance of um, having good traits. We might just take the first one, Noble Veins, which is a nice bump to both existing congenital traits and new ones getting uh, inherited, and some nice ones further down the line as well. Although that final one, I mean, once you get down to there, it's quite expensive, and the, the life expectancy going up by five is um, not the best one, to be honest, but... Yeah, we'll go with that first, and then maybe for the next ones we'll start down this tree, because you get, at the end of it, you, you get to have an additional Man at Arms Regiment, and it's a special one, House Guard, which are very, very good heavy infantry. So that's probably the next one we will uh, go down. Some of the Kin one might be quite useful as well, because you have um, better educational traits, um, better disease resistance, close family opinion. Well, it's only plus 10. And no prowess lost from age is also very nice. In fact, increased skills with age, so presumably that means more likely to get events that bump your skills up. So there are some good ones, but you do have to choose carefully because it gets more expensive every single time. Anyway, this siege is nearly done. That will be yet another title under my belt. And we'll just well get that all around some while we can. So what duchy is that? Oh, it's there. Okay. Uh, don't really need to create that just now. Save our gold for other things. So oh, enforce demands. Oh wait, I've already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know what that'll be. Uh, it's because of the, the ransom. That's why that'll have locked that. Right, so disband all armies. And the great yellow blob grows a little bit greater. So anyone that is remotely close, I mean, most of these people are going to be at least minus 60. Just because of uh, cultural and faith distance, uh, different distances, differences. She's only minus forty-five, and I do have. Like this is where dread comes in useful because you can use dread to make people much more likely to uh, increase, uh, to to you know take offers like that. Anyway, let's just is that a single wait? Is that a single county? I might as well go with the cheaper option. Because you can still use the duchy claim as well, or the, the duchy cash as bell eye. But uh, it's more expensive, and so why bother when you have a cheaper option that does the same thing? I'll probably do be doing lots of jumping forwards with these just because it's, it's it's just me sieging over and over again and there's only so much to say. Well, this is a useful one, Peacemaker, so you only need to get to 90% war score before you can um, basically enforce your demands, but for these small little chieftains uh, that we're going up against it's not really a thing that's necessary. Uh, declare war, conquer county, dun, 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 dun. oh, a scheme at court, uh, someone's trying to da, 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 plot to kill my daughter which is not good. But it's fine, she's only a daughter, we have more useful children around. <laughs> God, what a terrible thing to say. Actually that, that's not really true anymore because I've, I've put the uh, gender equality of the faith to uh, be equal. Actually, I can now give land to both sons and daughters. So it's actually going to mean more land, like the land gets split more ways than it was previously because it's going to be going to both my sons and my daughters. Uh, do we have... not everyone's actually married, which so we probably should get some of these people married as well. Uh... Why would I be able to... I don't... Have I got a seducer as a thing? There are certain things that remove penalties. I don't know. Anyway. 
bad. That is, there we go, with false demands. Do, do, do. And disband all. And <laughs> Uh, Cork County. This is the part that's getting a little bit, like, I don't know if tedious is the right word, but repetitive. It's definitely repetitive. I have talked about this previously when playing CK. I mean, not in the previous episode I did but I, I I do quite like the the rally point system because it, it it used to be previously you know your armies got raised at the exact uh, dip, you know in e each individual county and you had to bring them together which could pose some interesting logistical challenges sometimes trying to get all your armies to one point and um, Wait, why am I? Am I a cannibal or something? Why am I getting that event? Okay. I can kill him and eat him. Do, have I got cannibal? I'm not sure why I'm getting that if I don't have cannibal. That seems like I would go a bit bonkers, but <laughs> okay. Because cannibal is a trait you can have in this game. So I'm going to need to get rid of that stress after this fight. Ha! Huh, I don't know! I don't know why that's popped up. I definitely don't have any mods going on in the background, so... Yeah. This is pure vanilla. Because there are all kinds of mods that give extra events and whatnot. Do, 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 do. What are we at? 19 of, of 23. And, and some for 10. I probably can release a bunch of these prisoners as well. I could just do a mass execution, which would probably cost me piety. Uh, oh, I can improve my war horse. Uh, he needs to be stronger. Let's see what happens. Uh, I have gained strong walls. I think that must be a new event. I don't remember having seen that previously when playing this game. But yes, yes, I know. People like it when you release them from prison. Okay, this is one where we might need to do... No, no they're split between two, two different duchies, which is kind of annoying. And I can use... Kingdom, but I think you can only use that once. Yeah, one kingdom. So we don't want to waste that. So let's just go with Conk County. Oh, which is fine. I keep reflexively hitting the escape key, which of course clears out some screens, but it doesn't get rid of others on the. Uh, on the thing. <laughs> the interface. I think maybe we might beat them just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. So there we go. Fight one. Yet more fame. Uh, which I think... Does that go towards Renown? I can't remember. Goes towards something. Right, Denmark and Sweden. So we're kind of... Well, there's a couple more of these left. And for some reason the Kingdom of... Wait, what? Right, uh... Oh, this is going to be a... A lifestyle thing. Oh, we can actually spend 80 to get plus 15 control, that's fine. How How is England in... What's... What? <laughs> I... Okay, at some point a Norwegian has taken the... But, yeah. 
I mean, one thing I definitely still prefer Crusader Kings 2 to 3 over is in CK3, I mean, it's a little better than when the game came out, but the map just gets so, so messy. And kingdoms and empires tend not to be particularly stable. Uh, Byzantium, I think, by virtue of starting off um, in a, a fairly strong position and um, kind of a fairly culturally unified position, tends to do okay. But yeah, um, you don't tend to get big empires. You tend to get lots and lots of fragmentation, which is, I suppose, nice for the player in that it, it's easier to gobble up lots of little neighbors than to be clashing with big, strong, powerful neighbors. But it, it doesn't give the game a particularly historical feeling. <laughs> Whereas, uh, yeah, things things can be a bit more stable in CK2. And in fact, I think there's actually game options for stability of uh, at least certain kinds of government. So you can change things in slightly interesting ways. That's, that's one thing I kind of feel like CK3 could do with working on. Because that, that was one of the the big things through the kind of the dark ages into the early late medieval was um, kings consolidating power basically and it happened at different speeds in different places but uh, it, it did certainly happen anyway that was a total random aside just sparked by the fact that for some reason the lone holdings of the King of England uh, are not quite the lone holdings, he's got Dorset. <laughs> oh, for some reason in Norway. <laughs> don't even, I don't even know, I really don't. So we've actually just converted one province. This is going to take a while and uh, it, it actually is speeded up a bit by having um, land held by vassals of the the you know correct faith, the faith you want things converted to, because they of course have their own court chaplains and whatnot, and will. Um, oh, but that's already converted. Yeah, they they'll convert stuff at their own pace, basically. So maybe Finland. It's going to take a little while, though. That's one thing you can do, which I sort of have tried to bolster it a bit but you can put everything towards faster conversion basically that that is a possibility but you do sacrifice some other potential quite nice bonuses if you do do that but of course having a unified religion across your kingdom can be a tremendous boon so there's probably a strong argument to be made for 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 doing that in particular Right, uh, we've got two more. This one's going to have to wait until one of our characters dies and we can declare war on them without it being a, a broken truce and costing a tremendous amount of prestige, potentially. If this was CK2, I would have some kind of uh, coalition against me at this point. But don't know if I don't think that's a thing in this game it could be a bit silly in CK2 it certainly wasn't a perfect mechanic but it was intended to be a kind of anti-blobbing thing something that was meant to slow you down as a player and not just conquer everything in sight as I'm doing here I don't think there really is anything similar the only, the only way in which things can get a bit sticky is if you um, target somebody that has a lot of allies and suddenly you're facing a bunch more people than you were expecting to. Uh, I do have cannibal as a trait. Apparently I do. I'm just not seeing it here. Is it some kind of hidden trait? Did I pick cannibal and forget that I'd picked cannibal? I honestly can't remember. Um, so I can listen to the locals, popular opinion plus 20, or <laughs> I might do that. I might, uh, oh, no, I want to see what the 
No. There we go. Huge boost to health. Nom 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 nom. A <laughs> poor old lady. She was like, "Oh, oh, my liege, how are you today?" And and I I was like, "Nom nom nom nom." <laughs> there you go. That's a very graphic description of what happened. Yep. <laughs> YouTube's going to demonetize me now. The big advantage to only raising my retinue, by the way, is the the quality of the uh, the troops are very very good. Uh, honesty is yeah, it's fine. We can keep honesty. I honestly don't remember where I uh, decided to go with cannibal, but apparently I did at some point. Right, the Kingdom of England. Oh wait, yeah, we can't because my armies are raised. Daughter-in-law. Okay, this is just going to be because it's a uh, granddaughter. We are getting some some nice strong traits coming through, but um... oh, I'm ill apparently. Oh no, he's ill. King of England. Duh. Right. Uh, Conquer County, which is actually going to force him then uh, to inhabit one of his other counties. I'm not trying to take over them all. Oh, maybe I could. I don't know, but. They're all out of the way, so let's just go with this for the time being. And... Oh, somebody's also calling me into a war. Prussian conquest of... Okay, well what I can do is I can raise my men at arms down there. And I can raise the rest of my troops there. There we go. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, and well, we have peasant rabble. Okay, we might have to deal with the peasant rabble first, but that's fine. It's just going to be stomping a lot of small armies. And there's some of them even down here as well. <laughs> All of these under siege messages. Okay, okay. armies around to uh, trump down on these filthy rebels. Right, we have Gallant. Uh, we could go for the whole of Body Tree and just try and see how long we can get the Queen to live. Because potentially it could be an awfully long time. 30,000! Oh, that's going to be fairly horrendous. I should probably split that in two at the very least. Oh. Yep. Right. Uh, I'm going to use to have the outliner open here. And oh, that army, say down to there. We'll keep them relatively close together. But they're so big, it's not really they're like they're not going to be threatened by anything. It's just attrition that's going to be the big problem. And let's send them up there because we still all have uh, have all these filthy rebels to deal with. Filthy rebel scum. Quite a lot of them. This is quite a widespread rebellion. Not, I'm not really worried, it just makes things a little bit spicy. And somebody plotting the Duke of. My son! Oh, okay. Yeah, my son doesn't actually like me that much. My, he's my, my primary heir, which I don't know if that's a big problem, but it could be a problem. It could be a massively OP character and still get murdered by somebody. Right, they're almost in place. I 
this is going fine. We have so many troops available. Which is not going to be true later on necessarily. Right, let's just send them over. Or do we keep them together? Actually, we could have them down there as potential reinforcements. I mean, it's all useful prestige. All these little battles. Well, I don't think it gives you that much prestige. Oh, well, there we go. Fame more than prestige. I should look that up, really, the relation between fame and uh, prestige and renown. There's bound to be some link. Overall, this war down here seems to be going reasonably okay as well. There we go, marching after that army. Once we finish the siege. Oh, hello. There's some rebel armies have blobbed in my capital. Let's go deal with them. Yeah. That's fine. It's all completely under control. I mean, peasant troops, just as with CK2, are low quality, so you, you don't really have to worry unless you are. Well, you've got very low troop numbers yourself, or else you've got something else going on, like a, another war or something. Oh, actually, yeah, we were going to go and oops, send them up there, tackle those troops. Not sure where these guys are going. Or, or unless they're being forced to retreat. Right, so rebels, rebel scum. We're just going to, we're going to execute you right now. Off with his head. Head <laughs> and devour. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, Cannibal's quite a fun trait. And then... I really don't remember taking Cannibal, but I must have. So that just thieves. This army down here. Both domain limits, so we're, going, we're starting to need to hand out... Uh, can probably create some titles. Right, we'll just give that duchy in its entirety to somebody, I think. Uh, right, my main player heir is already a duke. Um... That's going to be his main heir as well. Could I give him that as a duchy? Is that going to work? Or do I just give it to someone in my court? Maybe let's just give it to someone in my court. Let's find someone with semi decent stats. Court chaplain? So I don't know if that'll make him ineligible. I could give it to one of my daughters. Potentially. Sure, okay. Oh, she's 13 still. Let's wait until she's a bit older. Give her some other title. Uh, there's a cat meowing at me in the background here. Huh, apparently I can give titles to people who are in prison, which seems a bit of a weird thing that you would do that, but...
let's go with him and we can get him to convert potentially so it would be do, 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 do. what was it again I've already forgotten the name of the duchy. <laughs> I'm going to double check that. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, I've created the wrong title, did I? Yeah, I was this title I meant to create. Which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. <laughs> Right, it's fine. I kind of got there in the end. Kind of. Right. Recruit to court. And... To my conversion. And grant titles. Uh, it was... That one. There we go. Basically, give them all titles there. That's fine. Oh, that's much easier to pronounce. Vesta button. Right, there we go. How are my armies doing? Losing quite a few men to attrition, but that's fine. I do seem to be fairly solidly winning this fight. That seed shouldn't take too long. Indeed, that one is almost done. Could probably stand down those troops. Uh, actually, I'll keep the trait generous. Generous isn't a bad one. actually stand them down as well and I think we can can we then make her a commander of one of these armies yes that's fine so then sieging will happen a lot quicker because she's got bonkers skills I think after this we will take this province here and uh, well, these two provinces if we can manage it and then I think I'll call the episode there because I've been going for a little while be nice if we get Prussia to be you know converted but it's quite difficult to convert other rulers that's one thing you can't do in this game and one thing you could do in in CK2 just send your court chaplain to try and convert other rules, which was tricky. Most of the time it would just end up with your court chaplain getting thrown in prison or outright killed, but uh, it was possible. If nothing else, it was a good way to get rid of a court chaplain that you didn't like or that was causing you problems. And we can now be attacked by Christian holy wars so that might be a thing we have to worry about at some point right well I'm not in control of this war so I have to wait for the AI to make their peace it's fine we can even stand down that army there there we go so they got whatever it is they wanted out of it. Some extra land, I guess. Let's see if there's any other ransoms. Yep, a couple. Nice little bit of coin. 
And someone needs a guardian. It's fine. Right, so let's get this last one on the go. And ah, again, two separate duchies, that's annoying. And I can't subjugate them because I've already done that once before. Apparently that's a thing I can only do once. I could do Holy War, but again... They split! <laughs> I have no way of getting these both at the same time, so let's just do the regular county. And, uh, yeah. That's fine. Right. Raise my arms. Oh, we have a perk we can take. Right, we're going to do this tree here. Although, do we not already have whole of body? Did I not? I don't know. I don't think I did, you know. That's one thing you can do is is when you're creating characters. And I don't think I did. But you can, you can add all of these end of tree lifestyle learning traits. They are quite expensive. But if you don't care about making a grossly overpowered character... It, it kind of um, it doesn't completely negate the point because uh, there's all the kind of um, intermediate perks as well but it, it does sort of remove some of the impetus for pushing for particular end of tree perks How is the dynasty doing? We must have a fair few alive at this point. 13 living members. Oh, not as many as I thought, but that's not too bad. I mean, we're starting to get kind of like the first generation having their own kids, so we should maybe get some people married. Is he... He is in my court. How come I can't get him... Married. Don't know. They're married. No idea. Not that important though. 98%, that's fine. Enforced demands. And. Bish bash bosh, there we go. So that is a nice bit of expansion. We have reformed the faith, which is potentially going to be a, a very useful thing. Because it's uh, let me choose some slightly more desirable things to go on. And also it means successors can then have an easier time of, uh, oh, that's the culture screen, of um, basically making tweaks and changes later down the line. Because it's a lot easier to to make your own split or make your own new faith if you're starting off as a reformed faith because if you're an unreformed faith you have to go through that step of reforming the faith first so just even reforming the faith was a really useful thing for potentially further down the line so next time we're going to be getting our teeth into some meteor prey namely Denmark and Sweden they're going to be the first real big kingdoms that we've tried to tackle although this was a a reasonably sized fight as well Galicia Volhynia um, but uh, that that was a helping out an ally rather than conquest for my own purposes so yeah we'll see how that goes but given that this is the massively OP gold queen of Finland I think we'll probably be okay so that's it for this episode hopefully you have enjoyed it and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.